In this video, we're going to have a look at a clip where Charlie Kirk absolutely eviscerates a student wearing a Che Guevara t-shirt. And I think that this clip is one that's important to put the spotlight on because it highlights a debating principle that's very important and often overlooked. So let's get into the clips. Che Guevara shirt. Give it to the Che Guevara guy. So, oh. Yeah, Che Guevara, the genocidal anti-gay revolutionary from Central and South America that he wears proudly on his shirt. Could you imagine if I wore a genocidal anti-gay figure on my... Oh, I'd be wearing a Che Guevara shirt. Go ahead, please. Uh, I, I don't think most of that is true, so... Che Guevara was unbelievably anti-gay. In fact, he executed homosexuals time and time again. So uh, that, that's a nice role model for you, but please go ahead. I'm, I've not seen any of the evidence of that, but anyway, uh, let's just move on. Uh... So what we just saw there was a perfect example of how to never ever start a conversation, especially if you have even the slightest intention of getting through to somebody. This is a gentleman who is at your event. He's waited in line to ask you a question and presumably have a good faith conversation. He hasn't been rude or obnoxious or yelled as far as we can see. Yet the first thing you do is ridicule and embarrass him. And it's not that Charlie doesn't have a good point because he does have a good point. It is hilarious when these students, I mean, I think this guy's a student, looks a little bit old, but let's assume that he's a student. When these students are wearing Che Guevara t-shirts as a symbol of revolution and as a symbol of equality, the things that Charlie has just said that he did are all true. He did have homosexuals executed and he put them in labor camps. And there were many other blights on his human rights record. But that's beside the point here. The point is the way that Charlie delivered that. Instead of ridiculing and embarrassing this man, the best thing that Charlie could have done there was to make a lighthearted joke about it, then ask questions. What does that t-shirt and Che Guevara more specifically represent to you? Have you been to Cuba? Well, did you know that Che Guevara actually did this? This was a great opportunity for Charlie to have a very productive and interesting conversation about a matter that university students are in embarrassingly uneducated about, but an opportunity missed. Before we get into the next clip, guys, help a brother out by chucking a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so that we can hang out every single day. Did we just become best friends? Yup! Do you wanna go do karate in the garage? Yup! Have you uh, ever considered how uh, most corporations in America are structured essentially like uh, private dictatorships and most employees do not have any democratic control over their own workplaces? And do you think maybe that's part of the issue? Also, have you uh, thought about how capitalism essentially abolishes private property for 90% of the population and the fact that most people are not given free land as a birthright is a big part of the problem? Okay. No, um, but so let's, let's break this down. So I'm guessing you come from a more Marxist val theory of value of uh, labor where you want the workers to own the, the means of production, right? Right. Okay, are you aware that over a million employees in America right now are part of what's called voluntary employee stock exchange programs where they actually do own the means of production? For example, Publix Grocery Store, which is the best grocery store in the state of Florida, is all, is all employee owned. So actually in a market, you have the voluntary means to be able to have your employees own, quote unquote, the means of production without ever having to fire a shot. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Mondragon Corporation in Spain? Oh yeah, I've heard of it, yes. And it's also, they're also widely inefficient and don't, doesn't work very well. But if someone wants to form that sort of corporation here in, the country, in America, they can. That's what's so beautiful about a free market. If you want to have an, what's called an ESOP, if you file under, under federal tax code, an employee stock essentially exchange program, you can. If you want to have an LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp, you want to be the only person in your company, you can. What, what matters is what kind of value are you creating? And here's the big thing, is that just because someone gets rich doesn't mean someone gets poor. When someone works for somebody else, they're getting a wage, they're getting an opportunity. They're being able to pay, get their kids through college, put food on the table. Where we disagree the most with the Marxist left is that the Marxists come after this and they will say, it is inherently exploitation if someone is gaining wealth. That is wrong. That is fundamentally wrong. If you buy a product, not only did someone have to make the product, but they have, they have a job, they have a wage, they're able to provide them for themselves. But if your product isn't good, people are not going to buy it. If your product is worthless, people are not going to keep on buying it time and time again. That is why things get better over time. Capitalism does three things. It makes prices go down, quality go up, and more people that have more stuff. That is why the poorest people in America are the richest people in the world. Uh 
So actually, pretty good questions there. I mean, in terms of the questions that you want to hear, because these are the sort of regular socialist talking point questions that you can actually change people's mind with because they're quite easily refuted. I mean, his first objection was that corporations are structured like private dictatorships. I mean, they're structured like hierarchies based on competence, not private dictatorships. Most employees don't have any democratic control over their own workplaces. I mean, Charlie answered that really well there. If you want to create that sort of workplace, then in the free market, you are more than welcome to do so. The thing is with socialists, though, they want to tell us how we can run our businesses. We don't want to tell them how they can run their businesses but they want to tell us. So that kind of tells me that maybe they're fueled by resentment and they don't actually want to go and start companies. They don't want to be productive and they don't want to embody the change that they want to see in the world. They just want to drag everyone else down. And then the third point, which is quite a funny one, is that capitalism abolishes private property for 90% of the population. Firstly, it doesn't abolish private property. If it were abolished, that would mean that it would be formally put an end to, like, like a policy would be put in place. Capitalism most definitely doesn't abolish private property. It's just that some people can't afford it. And funnily enough, the philosophy that you subscribe to, Marxism, actually abolishes it. That's like one of its core tenets. So if that's a big problem, then you're wearing the wrong t-shirt. And Charlie makes a great point. Capitalism makes prices go down, quality go up, and more people have more things. And this is something that's extremely true. And he's just such a persuasive guy with the amount of knowledge and facts he has. The guy's like a walking, talking encyclopedia. And believe me, guys, if you watch this channel, you'll know that I love a debate smackdown just as much as the next man, probably more. But there's a principle here that I think is important. And here's the principle. If you're in a boxing gym, and if you're doing a sparring session, you only hear hit as hard as you get hit, especially if you're fighting someone who's less experienced than you. If you know that you're much better than someone and you just start wailing on him, then you're just a bully. And if the top boys in the gym get word of that, and next time they spy you, gonna have a bad time. And I think that this principle also applies when it comes to having debates and conversations. If somebody's much less experienced than you and hasn't come at you, then it's your responsibility to handle that person with care and try and effectively influence them and change their mind. However, if this person is just as experienced as you and they come out swinging and go for the jugular, it's fair game. Uh, well, I, how do you, uh, what about like people who don't have any money? If you use money to determine people's wants and needs, then uh, if, uh, essentially people who don't have any money are gonna no money. be left so out. This is, it's like, what, do money mean, is how, what do you what do you mean? How do you account with people for, with no money? This is America. If right. you have no money, you can work hard, and you will be awarded for that. I started with absolutely nothing in my life, so I, I, I'm the person you're looking for. I'm the person you're looking for. I started my life $150,000 in debt. Came from a two a two parent home. Apparently, a parent, my parents divorced. They couldn't give me any money. I was out on my own since I was 16 years old. I'm doing pretty well right now. You want to know what I did? I didn't turn to the government. I didn't cry. I didn't say white man bad or orange man bad. I got a job and I started working and I paid down my student. Give life. it up for Candace. Just, we just have to start stop handing out people excuses. Well, this and, idea of like this, this, this is the victim mentality. It's like, what are we gonna do about this victim? Tell them how to be a victor. That's what we're gonna do. This is America. And every single policy that Candace and I fight for is how do we get more opportunity to more people, whether it be school choice, whether it be entrepreneurship, opportunity zones, getting people off of government welfare. So you ask, what about people with no money? We have tried to help people with, through There's government. three things that you need to get out of poverty. It's, it's get a job, graduate high school, and don't have kids before you get married, and that's it. Then you get out of the middle, you, you get out of the lower class. Would you like to trade in your shirt for a socialism suck shirt, or? What do you think? That was actually a good joke. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Credit to him for getting up, asking a respectful question, and engaging in dialogue. That is what we need. But we all must be willing to be the fool at some point to be the hero. We all must literally or metaphorically wear the Che Guevara shirt at some point before we can trade it in for a nice figure-hugging linen or silk 
button up shirt. But in all seriousness, my first impressions of this guy, I know I like to go psychoanalyst on here sometimes, but he seems like a fella that is a little bit lost and confused and it's maybe trying to fit in socially. And unfortunately, this is the kind of guy that leftism often preys upon. People who are looking for a purpose, something bigger to be a part of, a big social justice cause to fight for with his brethren by his side. But it's also this kind of person, if he is who I say he is, that can be influenced. And it's this kind of person that, in my opinion, if he's influenced by someone like Jordan Peterson, who tells him the value of personal responsibility, getting your room in order and making yourself a respected and influential person, as opposed to the victim mentality mindset that Candace put forward with such gusto there, maybe this guy would end up having a really positive impact on the world. Who knows? And I reiterate that there is certainly a time and place where ridiculing ideas is absolutely necessary. When those ideas are a true pathology and when those ideas come from a place of malice and resentment. Unfortunately, at the start of this clip, it just wasn't one of those cases. But I'm interested to know what you guys think. Maybe you think that these ideas need to be just cut off at the knees and that Charlie completely did the right thing. Can't wait to read your comments. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you would like access to uncensored, exclusive content and to join the Rattlesnake TV community and support the channel so that I can bring the best content possible to you as often as possible, then please consider hitting the link in the bio, rattlesnaketv.locals.com and support the channel. And if you want to watch another clip, click right here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, if you get value from these videos, then click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV.